Hello, my name is Dori Klesis, and I'm with the Mount Sinai Health System in New York. Today I'm with Dr. Miriam Murad. She's a professor in cancer immunology and director of the Precision Immunology Institute at Mount Sinai. Welcome. So you say there's a, a revolution in the treatment of cancer through immunology. Can you yeah. explain that? Yes. So you know, the, the treatment of cancer used to be based on chemotherapy and radiation, and more recently on what we call the targeted therapy, where we try to find mutation in, in, the, in the cancer cell and try to target it. So we were all focused on cancer. However, when you look at the cancer lesions, what you see is that immune cells often exceed the number of cancer cells. And for a decade, I would say probably a century, mm -hmm. uh, scientists have been trying to really uh, uh, understand why the immune system, since it was present, it was there in the cancer lesions, why the immune system was not killing these cells. So there's a lot of data that suggests that there is indeed killing, and we don't see that. But at some point in those cancers that grow, the immune system was not, clearly was not eliminating that, that you know, that, that abnor these abnormal cells until we realized that in fact the immune system was being shut down by the cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, a fantastic immunologist called Jim Allison, who won the Nobel Prize last year, identify some of the key mechanisms of how this is being shut down. And by blocking these molecules that we are being dampened by cancer cells, and this molecule is called now checkpoint. You can see it, even my nanny knows now what the checkpoint is. If you now block this checkpoint, checkpoint means stop, right? So if you block the checkpoint, what we saw for the first time is that some cancer were just melting, and they were melting when we were treating them only with this drug that attacked the immune system, not attack it, in fact, reactivated it, not attack it, use it, you know, unleash it. And that, uh, so th this cancer, were being, uh, uh, were, were responding, were melting uh, upon treatment with a drug that didn't attack the cancer. What kind of cancers are we talking about? Well, initially it was, uh, you know, melanoma. Melanoma is a cancer which we know mm -hmm. as cancer immunologists was, was quite responsive to immunotherapy for a lot of data uh, that were generated by many groups. But where, what really I think made us realize that, that, that the revolution was starting is when we, when we observed lung, can lung cancer is a terrible disease that doesn't respond to any chemo or radiation, respond to surgery, a little bit of benefit of some chemo regimen and radiation, but really nothing substan substantial. And when we saw that lung cancer lesions and lung cancer metastasis mm -hmm. started to melt, uh, upon treatment with this drug that was attacking only the, what was, I shouldn't use the word attack, but which was, you know, uh, using, in fact, reactivating the immune system, we realized that there was something big happening and that was going to change uh, cancer care. And indeed, uh, these uh, drugs that reactivate the immune system is now being used uh, against many, many cancer. FDA, in fact, had changed the way they, they approved drugs to develop fast track uh, uh, paths uh, to really uh, uh, approve, verify this new mm -hmm. drug. They are realizing, and in fact, they have been our strongest allies. It's so extraordinary, right? The FDA is this, it's, it's, it's a government agency mm -hmm. which is very cautious, but they, uh, are realizing that we can't, we have to keep, we, we have to really make sure that this is going to be part of cancer care as quickly as possible. So is this a drug you take as a pill? Is it a, an infusion? No, it's an infusion. Okay. I mean, things are changing, right? Okay. So right now it's an infusion. It's not so different than taking chemotherapy. So you go and you have an infusion for a few hours. Usually it's a, you can do it in an um, in outpatient clinic. Uh, we make sure that uh, um, you know, we watch carefully because there is potentially some side effect, like a little bit of fever that can happen. Uh, and, and we, so, the dosing, in fact, is still being really mm -hmm. uh, examined very carefully. Right now, we give it every two weeks or three weeks, and things are, and this may, may change and evolve. And you are working with vaccines. Is that different? So no. So so I. So there is two type of big uh, uh, immunotherapy focus at Sinai. There is a, a vaccine element where you take, uh, you you analyze what your your tumor cells express, and you try to vaccinate the same way you will vaccinate against flu. 
right? So you have something that looked like flu, you inject it every year, right? And, we, in, and, 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 and the hope is that if you encounter the real flu, you will respond, you will have a milder flu because you have the immune response that has been educated against this. We do exactly the same. We identify the specific element that, that is part of the tumor and we inject it to patients to educate an immune response against the cancer. That's one part of it. But the other part, which my group focuses on, is to identify novel checkpoint, other checkpoint molecules, other molecules that are dampening the immune system. And I can tell you there are many of them. It is an extraordinary time. Because we have, Jim, identified this checkpoint that, uh, and, and Tatsuko Honjo and his colleagues, uh, who were Tatsuko Honjo, who was also uh, awarded the Nobel Prize together with Jim Allison for another checkpoint. But there are many others, and this is where our immunology knowledge is going to be, uh, you know, used and, and, and harnessed to really fight this disease. And we have never been as excited because we, and so now that we understand how this checkpoint works, we can anticipate what are the other pathways that are probably going to be, uh, uh, you know, induced in patients that resist because you know this treatment has had a lot of success but not 100 percent success right mm -hmm. uh, and and my group focuses on those patients that resist immunotherapy to identify additional immu immunotherapy or uh, immunomodulator we call them drugs that modulate the immune system other that we can then add uh, to further enhance tumor response and how close are we to clinical trials with your work in that area? So we have started a series of clinical trials, um, but you know, I, I now I, I hate traveling because I, I just want you to be there the all the time. The I cannot <laughs> leave the lab. I, and each time it's an endeavor for me to do. Uh, it is such an exciting time. So we have started a series of trials. So I'm a basic immunologist. I'm also a clinical oncologist by training. But my, I, for this, you know, 15 last year, I've just been in the lab really studying the cancer lesions. I team up with surgeon and fantastic medical oncologist. One of my closest colleagues at Sana is Tom Maron. He's a young MD. PhD, uh, immunologist by training, clinical oncologist. And what we do, the whole team, and I have a technologist, Brian Brown, who thinks about way of understanding how we can probe the role of all these checkpoints, you know, anticipate what they do. So there's a whole team of us, uh, 15 of us, who meet at least twice a week, at mm. least twice a week, to review data and think about novel trials. We are putting a series of trials. We just closed a very nice contract with uh, an industry called Regeneron to, to, to study, in fact, mechanism of resistance. And we have identified novel pathways that we think are going to enhance tumor response. It's looking very good in preclinical model. And now we are putting it in the clinic. I think we are on the, I'm, I've never been as excited in my life. Well, terrific. Thank you so much. My Good pleasure. luck with the work. We're all waiting to hear. Thank so you thank you very, you very much. much, Dr. Thank you for Marat. having me.